Hello everyone, this is Jurassic Toys 2000 here, and we're going to be continuing our look at the Jurassic World toy line, and we are looking at the Wave 2 Bashers and Biters Allosaurus. I picked this one up at Walmart a couple days ago, and uh, this one, it, it looks better than the previous Bashers and Biters that were released, and I thought I'd share my thoughts with you on this figure today, so let's get to it. But first, let's unpackage it. So now we've got it out of the packaging, and here's the figure. Now it's an interesting design. It's very sleek for an Allosaur. Looks like it could use a little more food. Articulation, like any previous Basher Biter figure, is minimal, limited to really four points of articulation, of course excluding the articulation required for the action features. There's articulation in both arms. The left one is the only one that can do a full 360 without being hindered, and the legs both of them go back and forth, but can only go so far. You don't want to try pushing them too far, otherwise you'll risk breaking the figure. And I wouldn't at all be surprised if that happened. Now, let's take a look at detail. Like on previous Basher Biter figures, detail is minimal, but not non-existent. Scaling detail can be seen all around the face and on the top of the head. The eyes, beady in their sockets, are painted, but it's hardly noticeable on camera. They appear to be a yellow color with a little black pupil. The most prominent feature on the head is the crests, which are sculpted in such a way that kind of resemble Mickey Mouse ears. Looking inside the mouth, there aren't any really noteworthy details. The roof of the mouth is to an extent sculpted, and there's a bit of a tongue down here. But that kind of detail is brought down by the unsightly joint inside the mouth. Really off-putting. And on top of that, one of my minor complaints with the figure is that the teeth are too small in comparison with the rest of the mouth. Moving down to the body, the scaling detail continues, and the scales get much larger, especially on the back. Here is the infamous dino damage wounds that cannot be covered up, only this time it's not as bad as the previous ones, like, say, for instance, the Spinosaurus. It looks more like it got clawed by something, so it's a plus for detail. The arms are rather large and a little muscular, and the individual hand claws are painted, which is always welcome. Moving down to the legs, they are really muscly. This Allosaurus does not skip leg day at all. And once again, the toe claws are painted, although what's weird is that the dew claw, the little claw that's sort of on the side of the heel, is absent. On the upper left leg, we have the conjoined JW mark in white, sort of unnoticeable on yellow. And detail continues up the curvy tail and it ends in a little flick. The same amount of detail continues on the other side, but is once again diminished by the classic Jurassic World screw holes. This time we have four, but wait, let's do a check. Hasbro got sneaky with us last time with the Stegoceratops. Let's see, that's one, two, three, four, same on the other side, and oh, there we go, five. Five screw holes. Why? The base color of this creature is an off-white color for the underside, with yellow and red colorations tossed around, running along the back, down the tail, and a little bit on the legs. There's also some black highlights on the top of the figure running from the snout to the tail, but it kind of looks like Sharpie marker was just smudged around on it. This combination of colors strangely reminds me of McDonald's. Henceforth, I dub this creature Ronald McDonaldosaurus. Now let's look at action features. Turning the tail to the left side will make the head shake back and forth as if it's shaking prey in its mouth. Pushing the tail down will make the head and neck rise up and the jaw open. Now for a size comparison, let's bring in the disproportionate T-Rex from Wave 1. And these two scale up pretty nicely, although if in a death match, I think the Allosaurus would prevail due to its agility and, you know, much more respectable appearance. Next, let's bring in the Stegoceratops, also from Wave 1. 
and they scale pretty nicely as well. Although our friend, Mr. Allo, has some trouble deciding whether or not this is Stegosaurus or Nasudoceratops. I have no idea what you are, but you look tasty anyway. And finally, let's bring in the 2013 Allosaurus. And this thing simply towers over our JW Allosaurus. A rating for the Basher Biter Allosaurus figure would for me probably be a 7.5 out of 10. This is definitely one of the better Basher Biter figures by Hasbro. And I think it's one of the best up there, along with the Basher Biter Indominus Rex and the Pachycephalosaurus, which will be in my next review. So what do you think, guys? Will you be picking up this figure as part of your collection? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay tuned for more.